All right, well, let's get started. So I'm Frances Chapin. I'm the Arts and Culture Manager for the City of Edmonds. And I just want to welcome you here today for our special event for our Best Book Poster Exhibit. Um, and I want to start out, though, by thanking Lori Rose. Uh, Lori is our arts program specialist, and she is the person who magically transformed this traditionally in-person program uh, into an online program. And that makes it possible for us to be here today with all of you to celebrate reading and art. So uh, thank you very much, Lori, for doing that. It's an online event with an online exhibit, but Lori also had a hand in a very much hands-on piece of that. And even though it's warm and sunny today, and you probably aren't thinking about this last week when Lori was out putting up posters on the fence just east of the Francis Anderson Center. It was very cold and windy. So I would encourage you to all go and look at those posters on the fence if you haven't seen them already. Um, they are all, copies of them are all up hanging on the fence. And uh, fortunately, she's had some volunteers from the Friends of the Library who helped her out as well. And I think everybody got cold. Um, but there are, will also be a selection of the posters, not all of them, but a selection going up inside the library in the children's area on Friday. So that's another place where you can also see them. So with that said, I would like to introduce Rhonda Sotowski, who is the chair of the City of Edmonds Arts Commission. And this is a program which they have loved for years and years. So Rhonda, away you go. Thank you, Francis. Hi, as she said, I am Rhonda Sikowski, Chair of the Edmonds Arts Commission, and I'd like to welcome you to the best book I ever read poster thing. This is the most amazing, uh, uh, this is some of the most amazing art I've seen in a long time. <laughs> uh, we're, uh, we're partnered, the City of Edmonds Arts Commission is partnered with Friends of the Edmonds Library, the Edmonds Library, and we'd like to give special thanks to to all of the Edmonds schools who partnered with us and got the word out to students in our area. Before we get going and look at this beautiful artwork, uh, we'd like to acknowledge the original inhabitants of this place, the Snohomish people and their successors, the Tulalip tribes, who since time immemorial have hunted, fished, gathered, and taken care of these lands. We respect their sovereignty, their right to self-determination, and we honor their spiritual connection with the land and water. Uh, without further ado, the following student readers and artists have been selected at random to receive a gift certificate for the Edmonds Bookshop. And they are... Aiden W. Audrey L. I hope as we go along and you see some of this artwork, you'll be inspired to read these books and love them like the artists did. Caleb R. Dex S. Dylan M. Everett B. Grayson R. Isabella S. Isabella W. If you're an attendee and you have a question or a comment, uh, feel free to use the chat. Kaylin M. K. 
Ellen W. Kenzie G. Ooh, multi mixed media. Matthew B. Mercer C. Natalie K. N. Natalie K. U. Reese M. Shivel O. Soliana T. Tovi O. Congratulations. Hopefully in all of your homes, you're giving a great big round of applause. <laughs> Thank you so much, Rhonda. Yes, congratulations indeed to all of our amazing student artists. My name is Liz Morris. I am the president of the Friends of the Edmonds Library. We're a member-led nonprofit organization and we work to connect our community to our amazing local library. And this is one of our favorite uh, activities to partner in each year. So, so glad to uh, be a part of this. I do want to um, reiterate that the winners that were just announced will receive gift certificates certificates to the Edmonds Bookshop. Uh, Lori Rose will be following up with parents of the winners uh, with information about how you can obtain those. Uh, you'll have the option to either pick up the certificates at the bookshop or have them mailed directly to your home. So Lori will send an email out about that uh, before the week is out. Uh, so without further ado, I would like to uh, introduce our special guest speaker for the day, uh, Children's author Avril Vandemerva. Avril is a native of South Africa and she is the author of several books including How Cheetah Got His Tears, Once Upon a Rhinoceros, I Don't Want to Be a Hyena, and Don't Be Shy, Bush Baby, as well as several prize-winning children's stories set in Africa. She developed a love of illustrated children's fiction during a decade working as a Montessori teacher in Cape Town and as a high school English teacher in Johannesburg. And she is also a former resident of Edmonds. Welcome, Avril. Thank you very much. I am so excited to be here with you. As you've heard Liz say, my name is Avril. I am the author of children's picture books. And I'm gonna show you those books in just a few minutes. And um, as Liz has said, and as you can hear from my accent, I don't speak very much like an American because I come from South Africa. And I'm just gonna show you, South Africa is a country right at the tip of the continent of Africa. And it's important to remember that Africa is not a country. Africa has lots, is a continent that has lots of countries inside it. I wonder if you can guess how many countries there are in Africa. The answer is 54. There are 54 countries inside of Africa. So if you ever hear anybody say, well, next summer or next winter, I'm taking a trip to Africa, you're gonna have to ask them which country in Africa because there are 54. In fact, Africa is so big that uh, you can see in this picture, you could fit the purple, the purple picture uh, part is the United States, the red part is China, the red part is India, and all the other colors are European countries, and you could fit all of those into Africa. That's how big Africa is. So South Africa is only one country out of 54 inside Africa. Now, in South Africa, most people do speak English, but they usually speak more than one language. 
at least two languages, sometimes three and sometimes even more. The president of South Africa can actually speak all of the languages in South Africa and there are 11 of them. Now, let me see if I can remember what they all are. English, Afrikaans, Zulu, Kosa, Venda, Swana, Songa, Sesotho, Sotho, hmm, and Dabeli, and there's one more. Let me check my list. What could it be? Nope. Swazi. I've got them all. Swazi was the one I forgot. 11 different languages in Africa. So I thought that today you might like to learn a few words in Zulu. Zulu is one of the most common languages, one of the biggest language groups in South Africa. The biggest ones are English, Afrikaans, Zulu and Kosa. And actually, you, when you say the word Kosa, you're supposed to do it with a, with a click like this. So it should be pronounced Kosa, which is quite difficult to do. But I'm going to teach you how to say hello in Zulu and goodbye in Zulu. So the first word is Sawubona. See if you can say it with me. Sawubona. That means hello. And if somebody says Sawubona to you, you would answer by saying Yebo. Yebo. Now, I just want to explain that these words actually have more than one meaning. Because Sawabona actually means I see you. And that means I am paying attention to you. I'm not distracted by anything else. And when you say Yebo, Yebo means yes. And when you say that, you are saying, yes, I see you too. And I'm not going to be distracted by anything else. So I'm going to say this again. I'm going to say Sawabona, and then you all say Yebo, Sawabona. And you say Yebo. All right, one more word, or two, they're two together, but this is how to say goodbye. And you say Hamba Gashle. Now, that word is spelt with a K, but it's a G, a G sound. Hamba Gashle means, actually means go well. So you're wishing somebody well as you say goodbye to them. So we're going to come back at the end of the presentation. We're going to say goodbye to each other and say Hamba Gashle again. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit about how I became a writer. I saw the lovely posters that you guys drew and I'm actually going to come to Edmonds tomorrow and I'm going to go to the fence and look at the posters again because I enjoy your art so much. And you drew posters about some of the favorite books that you've been reading. And every one of those books, as you know, was written by an author. So the, the way I became an author was because I loved reading so much as a child, and I still love reading very much. In fact, when I was a, was a child, when the rest of the family were watching TV, I never wanted to, to watch TV. I only wanted to read my books. That's how much I loved it. So here are a few of the books, as uh, Liz has mentioned, that I have written. Uh, How Cheetah Got His Tears, Once Upon a Rhinoceros, I Don't Want to Be a Hyena, Don't Be Shy, Bush Baby. And there's another one coming in August. This is a picture of the cover called Pangolin Plays a Prank. Now, I'm going to come back and show those to you again a little bit later um, because I'm going to talk about something else to do with those books. So I loved reading so much that eventually, by the time I was eight years old, I decided I want to write my own poems and my own stories. And so I used to do that in my free time, not just when my teacher told me at school that I needed to write something, but whenever I had free time in the afternoons after school or on the weekends or during school vacation time. I used to write my own poems and stories. And after a while, I decided I got brave enough to start reading my stories and poems to other people. In fact, I eventually started reading my stories to the local Boy Scout troop. And I found out that everybody loved the poems and stories. And so I 
decided to send them to a publisher. And so I started getting, having my poems and stories published. Sometimes people ask me, well, how do you decide what to write about? How do you choose what to write about? And this is what I do, and I think it's very good advice if you are interested in writing stories and poems. I write about the things that are very interesting to me or about the things that I love. And some of the things that I love are African animals, African wildlife. So that's what I often write about when I write children's stories. And so as you've seen, I wrote about a cheetah, how cheetah got his tears. What does that mean? Yeah, I've got a little stuffed cheetah. Well, a cheetah has stripes that run down his face. I'm going to get you another picture of a cheetah that I've got in my bookshelf. There you go, you can see. He has stripes that run from the corners of his eyes down to his mouth. And I decided to, to write a story from my imagination about how Cheetah got those tears on his face. The next one, Once Upon a Rhinoceros. And here is Rhinoceros. He's been waiting on the bookshelf too. Once Upon a Rhinoceros is about how Hippopotamus is so jealous of Rhinoceros because she has such a beautiful horn and she wants to steal Rhinoceros's horn. The next one I wrote is called, I don't want to be a hyena. And here's hyena waiting on the bookshelf with me too. And this story is very important for what we're talking about today, because you see, hyenas are wonderful creatures. They're so interesting and they're so clever and there's so many things that they can do. They are fascinating. But a lot of the time, people think that hyenas are not very nice. And so this story is about how hyena tries to turn herself into all kinds of other animals because she feels so sad that nobody seems to like hyenas. And at the end, she discovers that the best thing she can do is be what she's made to be. And that is a hyena. And so the story ends very happily with hyena deciding to stay a hyena. The last one I have here today is Don't Be Shy, Bush Baby. And Bush Babies, there's Bush Babies been waiting on the shelf, see his long tail. Bush babies are like tiny, tiny little uh, monkeys. They, they belong to the monkey family. And they, they sleep all day long and they are very busy at night. And so this story is about how the other animals thought that Bush baby must be very shy because she won't come out of her hole in the tree all day long. And they try to get her to come out but when all the other animals go to sleep at night, she jumps out of her hole and she is full of energy all night long. Uh, the pangolin story, pangolin plays a prank, is about how pangolin, a lion wants to eat pangolin for breakfast. And pangolins don't run very fast. And so pangolin has to trick lion into not eating her and it's a story about how that happened so i just want to tell you that i am not very good at drawing so i actually don't draw the pictures that are in my books i have another lady called heidi who draws the pictures for me and the person who draws the pictures for books is called an illustrator and Heidi loves books too, and she loves reading too. But her favorite thing is to draw the pictures for the stories that other people write. And so that's what she does. Now, there are some people who write the stories and draw the pictures. And actually, there's a children's author who lives in Edmonds who, who has books that she writes the stories and she draws the pictures. Her name is Liz Wong. In fact, she's done presentations at the library before. So um, 
Her books are very interesting and she's very good at showing other people how to draw also. But you know what? I don't want to talk about myself all of the time. What I want to do is talk about you. What do you love to do? What are the things that you are interested in? Now, from the posters I've seen, I think that many of you love to draw and the posters are all about books. So I think many of you love to read. I do think that not everybody who loves to read and draw is, is somebody who becomes an author. Sometimes if you love to read, you could become a librarian or a publisher or an editor. There are lots of things to do if you love reading. In fact, whatever you love to do, it's important to be good at reading because you have to read to learn how to do those things well. But maybe some of you are interested in music or dancing or acting or space or science or sports or computers. There's so many wonderful things in the world to do and to be interested in. The most important thing is that you don't try to be like anybody else, that you just be who you are made to be and you do the things that you love to do and you pursue the things that you are interested in. That's what the hyena story is all about. And in fact, when I wrote that story, I actually made a rhyme to go with the story that I'm going to teach to you. And it's all about being yourself and trying not to be anyone else. Before I do that, I just want to show that a little while, a few years ago, I, this is me before when my hair was still red. And just after the cheetah book was published, I got to pet this cheetah myself. Her name is Gracie. And usually it's not a good idea to pet a wild animal. But Gracie injured her eye when she was a tiny little cub and she's blind in one eye. And so the wildlife rescue people went and got her and they took care of her and they raised her. And now she's an, she's an adult, but she can never live in the wild again because Gracie would not survive in the wild by herself. So because human beings, because people helped to take care of her, while she wasn't well, she's become a little bit used to human beings. And so it's okay to go into her enclosure and pet her if you're very, very careful. So I was so excited to pet, to pet a cheetah. And guess what? When you pet her, Gracie purrs loudly, louder than any cat you've ever heard. And if you put your fist by her mouth, she'll actually lick you and her tongue feels like sandpaper. So I hope that some of you get to go to one of the countries in Africa yourself one day and go on safari and see these lovely animals. Okay, I'm going to teach you the rhyme. I'm going to say it three times. The first time I'll say it by myself. The second time you can try to say it with me. And the third time we'll all say it together and see how that goes. Okay, it goes like this. I don't want to be a lion and roar, roar, roar. I don't want to be an elephant with my nose on the floor. I don't want to be a leopard sleeping in a tree. I don't want to be a hyena and go hee, hee, hee. I just want to be who I'm made to be because I'm the best at being me. You should be who you are too, because you're the best at being you. Okay, let's do it again, and we'll see if you can do it with me where you're, where you're watching from your home and with your family. I don't want to be a lion and roar, roar, roar. I don't want to be an elephant with my nose on the floor. I don't want to be a leopard sleeping in a tree. I don't want to be a hyena and go hee, hee, hee. I just want to be who I'm made to be because I'm the best at 
being me. You should be who you are too, because you're the best at being you. One more time, all together, with all the actions as loud as you can from home. I don't want to be a hot, oh, sorry, let me start again. I don't want to be a lion and roar, roar, roar. I don't want to be an elephant with my nose on the floor. I don't want to be a leopard sleeping in a tree. I don't want to be a hyena and go hee, hee, hee. I just want to be who I'm made to be because I'm the best at being me. You should be who you are too, because you're the best at being you. We can all be stars at being ourselves. Isn't that wonderful? One more thing I want to tell you about hyenas, and maybe some of you already know that hyenas laugh. That's why I said I don't want to be a hyena and go he he he. Hyenas have the most unusual laugh and maybe your, your parents or your teachers or somebody can help you go on, on YouTube and find some videos and you can see and hear hyenas laughing. And you know what, when hyenas laugh, it makes me laugh too. So it's a lot of fun to listen to them. Okay, now we're gonna get back to those Zulu words. Hello is sawabona and you answer yebo. But now we're going to say goodbye to each other. And so you say, Hambagashle, Hambagashle, Hambagashle. Right, so that's the end of my presentation. But we're going to find out from Lori if there is a, a, an opportunity for you to ask any questions, if you have any questions. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Avril.